Now, President Joe Biden managed to tear himself away from the beach for a few hours and he was asked about the media-created scandal about Donald Trump posing for photos and filming with Gold Star families at Arlington National Cemetery. This was his barely coherent response. What do you think of uh, President Trump's behavior at Arlington Cemetery with the, uh, the visit to the, uh, to the fallen soldiers? I don't want to answer things, but tell you what I think. Did you watch your vice president's interview on CNN? He said, I don't want to answer because I might tell you what I think. That's what he said. The nerve of this man. This is the puppet president who has abandoned these Gold Star families who lost their loved ones in his botched withdrawal of Afghanistan. Trump has been there for them since the start. He's the only one who showed up at Arlington National Cemetery to mark the three-year anniversary of their deaths. In the volatile world of modern media, where truth often seems to be a casualty of partisan warfare, one voice cuts through the noise with razor-sharp clarity. Rita Panahi, known for her incisive commentary and unapologetic style, has become a beacon for those seeking to navigate the murky waters of political discourse. Her critiques spare no one, left or right, as she fearlessly calls out what she perceives as hypocrisy, incompetence, and bias in the media landscape. Our journey into Panahi's world begins with a stark indictment of the current state of mainstream media. Her words serve as a rallying cry for those who feel disillusioned with the fourth estate. But first, when Donald Trump called the media the enemy of the people, I never imagined the bulk of the mainstream media would work tirelessly to live up to that tag. But here we are, and from the fine people hoax to the Russian collusion hoax to the Kamala is a great and visionary leader delusion. The gaslighting and deliberate disinfo has been turned up to thermonuclear levels. These words set the stage for a deep dive into the world of media bias and political shenanigans. Panahi doesn't pull punches, taking aim at what she sees as a systemic problem in how news is reported and consumed. Her critiques often focus on what she perceives as the left's more egregious offenses, but her sharp eye misses nothing, regardless of political affiliation. One of Panahi's recurring themes is the apparent disconnect between some politicians and the real issues facing everyday people. She often highlights moments that she believes demonstrate this gulf, as seen in this clip featuring Vice President Kamala Harris. So you know how those lids are, because this is, well, I'm just gonna speak, okay? So this is it. So you know how those lids on those Starbucks cups, they're white, right? And so if you wear lipstick, they get all over the lid. And so then I find myself in meetings if I'm the only woman, and that's kind of, and so I keep taking the lid off and having my cup out so that I don't have that big lipstick mark on the lid. <laughs> so I said, can we do something about the color of the lid? <laughs> conversation it's it's almost impossible to parody that but uh, thank god we have Esti Pouty because she's done just that that's my jam <laughs> so y'all know how they have those you know white cups white lids and starbucks and you know i'm just i'm gonna speak i'm gonna say it right <laughs> So, you know, they have those lids, and, you know, if you're the only woman and you're wearing lipstick... <laughs> I'm in that meeting and I gotta, you know, put the cup down, gotta take off the lid, I gotta drink it, like, it's, you know, it's a whole big thing. And, you know, so you know what I said? I said, can we do something about the color of this lid? <laughs> Panahi's commentary on this moment is scathing, suggesting that such trivial concerns from high-ranking officials are indicative of a larger problem in political leadership. She argues that while real issues like border security, inflation, and international conflicts demand attention, some politicians seem more concerned with the color of coffee cup lids. But it's not just politicians who find themselves in Panahi's crosshairs. She regularly takes aim at what she sees as the echo chamber of mainstream media, particularly when it comes to coverage of conservative figures. A prime example of this is her critique of the media's treatment of Donald Trump. Let's start with MSNBC. 
I was sickened by the prop that was Mr. Comparatory. Com, com, well, exactly. Uh, uh, Comparatory, yeah. Comparatory. I was sickened by them using him as a prop, his, his firefighter jacket, and then they spelled the man's name wrong. And so he said, oh, we're so grateful that the fire department sent this to us. These are local dang on dollars, okay? This is not, you know, Chicago Fire. Angela Bass ain't about to come on. They've got their names on the back of the jackets. Like, who are you fooling? But then they put the name on it and they spelled it wrong. I was just kind of like, if we're going to do props, like, let's at least get it right. I, I'm trying to organize that chaos in my mind. Just gross, gross. The truth is, it, it wasn't a prop. It was Corey's real uniform, and the moron activists in the media who ran with that angle would have known that if they did even five seconds of research. This exchange highlights what Panahi sees as a fundamental problem in modern journalism, the rush to judgment and the prioritization of narrative over facts. She argues that this kind of reporting does a disservice not just to the subject of the story, but to the public at large, who rely on the media for accurate information. Panahi's critiques aren't limited to American politics and media. She also takes aim at what she perceives as misguided activism closer to home, particularly when it comes to climate change protests. Now let's go to some local lefties losing it. Here are the climate cultists who think they are saving the world one blockade, one foolish protest at a time, and they've also started singing. One more. Stop. In the name of life, before we break apart. Stop, in the name of life, this could be our last chance. Before it's over, this crap is killing us. Toss it over, this coal is killing us. Stop. Wow. Wow. Panahi's disdain for what she sees as performative activism is palpable in her commentary. She argues that these kinds of protests often do more harm than good, alienating potential allies and oversimplifying complex issues. Her critique extends beyond the protesters themselves to the media coverage of such events, which she often sees as overly sympathetic and lacking in critical analysis. But perhaps the most damning critique Panahi offers is reserved for what she perceives as the media's double standards, especially when it comes to covering different political figures. She highlights what she sees as blatant hypocrisy in reporting, particularly in the treatment of similar policies proposed by different politicians. So here is CBS when Trump announced that policy. They said the policy would cost the government $250 billion over 10 years, according to our nonpartisan watch group. But this is how CBS reported that same policy after Kamala announced it as her own. Vice President Kamala Harris is rolling out a new policy position saying she'll fight to end taxes on tips for service and hospitality workers. Uh, can you spot the subtle difference there? Yes, it's one thing to express opinions on opinion programs like this, but there is something rotten in the media when so-called journalists who are supposed to present the news and only the news, stripped of their own personal views and biases, indulge in the type of Orwellian gaslighting and lies we've just seen. It's no wonder that trust in the media has plummeted to new lows. This comparison lays bare what Panahi sees as a clear bias in media reporting, treating the same policy differently based on who proposes it. She argues that this kind of selective reporting undermines the credibility of the media as a whole and contributes to the growing distrust of journalists among the public. Panahi's critiques aren't limited to serious political discourse. She also takes aim at what she sees as the absurdity of some contemporary social movements, as evidenced by this clip.
The queer and trans people of colour. I can just imagine the bewildered toddlers watching that. Panahi's commentary on such moments is often laced with sarcasm, highlighting what she sees as the increasingly convoluted nature of identity politics. She argues that this focus on increasingly specific identity markers serves to divide rather than unite, creating an environment where meaningful dialogue becomes increasingly difficult. As our journey through Panahi's world of media critique nears its end, we're left with a sobering reflection on the state of political discourse and media responsibility. Her final words serve as both a warning and a call to action. It's no wonder that trust in the media has plummeted to new lows. In a media landscape dominated by bias and sensationalism, Rita Panahi's voice cuts through the noise, challenging viewers to question the narratives they're fed. Her fearless critiques remind us of the crucial need for critical thinking in our media consumption. As we navigate the choppy waters of modern political discourse, Panahi's work urges us to approach news sources with healthy skepticism. The question remains, can we return to balanced, factual reporting, or are we destined for a future of partisan lenses? Ultimately, it's up to us, the viewers and readers, to demand better and hold our media outlets accountable. In a democracy, an informed citizenry isn't just a right, it's a responsibility.